everyone! Welcome to part two of my cheap Elsa costume remake video. If you haven't seen part one, please do check it out. I'll make sure there's a link in the description. Otherwise, here's a reminder of the kind of awful costume I started with. I've done most of the fixes on the costume itself already, though there's still a couple of things to address. Mostly now, I think it's that awful, awful wig. And boy, do I hate these wigs. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do with it. So as much as I've been putting it off, with the cape now ready to attach, it's time to deal with this hideous white overlock stitching that's on all the mesh. Um, I've done a little test of trying to sew it back up, hand sew it with thread, and I'm not sure that it's going to be A, as camouflaged as I'd like, or B, as sturdy as I'd like. So what I'm actually going to do is get a, a pale blue Sharpie, or other brand permanent marker, and just carefully go over the seams a little bit. Just rub it lightly over there and then it helps to just blend those bits in a bit more. On some bits like the neckline and that I am just straight trimming the, the overlocking off because this isn't mesh, it's not going to fray and so I don't really see much point to have it there at all. Time to address the hideous shiny white wig. Now it is way too white, I prefer Elsa's hair being kind of a platinum blonde. So we're going to make quite a, a bath here. I've got some hot but not fully boiled water. I don't want to use fully boiled water because I'm worried it might melt the wig. And then we've got obviously our fabric softener, part of the course for this kind of thing by now. And we've got some tea bags. And we're gonna start that all around, make a kind of tea and fabric softener bath, and see if that does any good. Be sure, of course, once you've drained the tea bags to get them out of there, because you don't want lumps of dye floating around effectively. I'm going to add a few more bags as I go, but uh, here goes nothing. Oh, that's still really warm. Poking stick, come back. Also, yes, don't use things like files for poking things in water. It's not really clever. this in for very long I'm gonna kind of dip it rinse it dip it rinse it until it's got the kind of color I want because I don't want it to go brown the wig has now dried I literally ended up putting it in the tea for about one to two minutes tops because all I wanted to do was take the whiteness off it a little and make it more platinum blonde as you can see compared to the wig head now it's just a slightly off white color I also dunked in some hair offcuts from other old wigs. I tend to keep all my offcuts. And this was from my uh, shoulder wig, so I ended up with a, a bit of a ponytail that I chopped off. I think we might need that. So I've kept that, I've dyed that, and I'm keeping it off to one side. Now from the fabric softener and tea, it does have kind of a slightly horrid residue feel to it. But we'll deal with that with some baby powder when we've started the styling. Now, the biggest problem about the styling for me has to be the front. It's got a bit of a widow's peak in it, which I like because she does have one, but it's kind of all just folded back over itself to give the swept back look, and it's made this bit really quite chunky. So I think we want to deal with that first of all. To start with, I'm going to have to unpick that first weft that's been folded over. first layer of hair off. As you can see it's kind of bent properly in two so it might not be of much use to us now but it might yet. The, uh, we can see the widow's peak properly now and it really is that they've just put a v-shape in the front. It's a bit too sharp. She has just a small peak there. 
So I'm going to give the wig a new hairline. I've never done this technique before, full disclosure. I am following advice and tutorials from Gnomes Cosplay. I'll pop a link below. Basically, I'm going to a glued hairline and it will give all of this a slightly more natural and a slightly better shaped look. And we're going to have to continue it quite far around because like all these cheap wigs, there are some big blank spots where the wefts are too far apart. So the first step is going to be mapping out our new hairline. Get that roughly in where it's going. And then draw on just where I want it to be. As you can see, I'm not adding much to this. That's going to be cut out. Oopsie daisy. And then I've got some cream scrap fabric here. It's quite a, a heavyweight cotton that I'm going to map this onto. So all I've done is cut out the little strip that I mapped in fabric and I've pinned it underneath the wig. Now I'm going to be using high tack very sticky all-purpose glue and some of this extra hair that we dyed and even the the weft that we pulled out of it earlier and it looks like following the tutorial all I need to do you can tell I'm making this up as I go along pretty much is get a bundle of hair cut it roughly level along the bottom but a bit jagged because you don't want it looking too straight across or that will look a bit silly and then if I can get the glue out oh that's way too much glue we'll make this work we'll make this work put the glue on and then press our first strip into place I assume I can trim it further once it's actually set, I hope. And then I will help it dry with the help of a hairdryer. I'll do this all the way along. So I've glued all the hair onto the hairline. I think I've gone way over where I need to, so I'm probably going to have to trim it. But for now, I'm going to leave that to set for 24 hours. Which is great because it's on my desk and now I can't do anything else. Yay! Right, the wig's front has dried, all the glue has set. I did come down way too far on a lot of these so I need to trim it. After that I think the process is going to be taming some of this front half. I'm going to try and be getting it up a bit and out a bit but get under control. Same process as always, hairspray and hair dryer. Just teasing it into place, back combing is probably going to be necessary in the top here to give it some lift. And then you'll notice that I haven't actually taken the braid out through all of this. That was to try and keep it as tangle free as possible, but it has tangled up a bit. So I'm going to have to take the braid out and redo it. how nasty these cheap wigs are it is shedding hair of course everywhere but I think I've got it in some kind of decent shape as you can see I've got her central kind of peak and some slightly more defined swirls coming off towards the back I don't want to trim too much off I've trimmed a bit to make some of these but I don't want to risk making the wig too thin redone the plait but it does need some trimming of some, some loose ends for the time being I've wrapped it in just an elastic band but I'm going to cover that up with something a bit nicer, like a little ribbon. And then the final step is, of course, some baby powder. 
On this one I'm going to literally just sprinkle it all over, then take the wig outside and shake it. I don't want to put it actually in through the wig because this is a bit more styled and the baby powder will stop the hairspray from sticking. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of gently pop it in and then shake it outside. And ta-da! I'm sorry you didn't see that because you would have seen me blowing towel powder off the wig and the blowback putting it all in my face. <sighs> Doing it outside was not a great idea, but it's less messy. Anyway, between the tea stain and the baby powder, I think we've managed to take away quite a lot of the shine of this wig, so I'm quite happy with that aspect. And I think the last thing, which I've uh, forgot to film, is that I've made some teeny tiny little foam clay snowflakey type shapes to go on her plait and I'm going to paint these with sparkly nail varnish because I want them to be nice and sparkly but I don't have any glitter and that should also seal them up and make them nice and water resistant as well. I think that's about it. This has actually been a, a massive build so uh, <laughs> let's see. So as a reminder this is what we started with and ta-da we have our finished Elsa. I'm actually really pleased with this. Um, 10 minutes ago, sure, I did have a little bit of a meltdown because I forgot to put the sideburns in, thought the whole costume was rubbish, almost threw it away, you know, cosplay stuff. But now that I've got that sorted, yeah, I quite like this. So yes, the wig is a bit big because of the cap construction type, so I've had to pin it to heck in the back. It's also uh, a bit hard to keep some of the flyaways in, some of my natural hair in. But because of the quite heavily styled nature of it, it's not shedding too much. The front is really stiff, I assume that's just natural for these uh, glued hairlines. And then where the sideburns are, it's quite bulky. But, you know, I probably could have done those better, if I'm honest. Got my sparkly bits in my plait. The fit I'm much happier with, both thanks to the alteration and the corset. I love the sparkles. And the cape, while it's not 100%, I'm definitely happier with it. So yeah, all in all that was quite a successful alteration. The not so good bit, this net is still ripping under the arms. I think they just legitimately didn't put enough ease in there. It's not even my stitching that's popping, it's actually just ripping the net. It is a bit tough to get in and out of now. I don't think this fabric has quite enough stretch to get over my enormous rear, but it, it's doable. The cloak is short. There's no getting around it. It's short for hers. I mean, it only goes just past my feet. Although I suppose that's quite useful perhaps for a convention setting. You don't want to be trailing too much behind you. And as always, yeah, these are a bit itchy still. The wig is a bit uncomfy because I don't like this net type. But on the positives, I think I've really turned around what was a cheap three quid dress and what a three or four quid wig. So yeah, huzzah! I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you some ideas on how to fix up your own costumes. If you like my stuff, please do like and subscribe. I'll also leave a link to my Patreon below where all photos will be going up first and videos go up early. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!